guys. Hello, everybody. Hello out there in, in uh, Facebook land. Thank you for joining us. Just going to take a moment and let people arrive for a second. I know the numbers are there. There, we're up to 10. Hello, hello, hello. Write it. Write something in the chat, in the comment box so I can, yeah, there we go. Chuck is here. There we go. Okay. Welcome to, um, dare I say, a profound co-created experience, a little context setting. My name is Rick Tamlin. Um, if you're on this page, you've been invited by a group of leaders and transformational heart-centered people who said, we want to do something. We want to make a difference. We want to wake up people's lives. We want to have an impact with our life. And um, we have been together for the last day co-creating this online event for you. Um, and just again, to set a little more context, I want to read a quote uh, from Margaret, Margaret Mead. Some of you might know this. Um, Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, is the only thing that ever has. So this 90-minute experience, and I dare say it's going to be an experience, um, we are we are holding and hoping that you stay with us the entire 90 minutes. Um, it's going to be as interactive and ex as experiential as possible in the land of Facebook and a Facebook Live experience. And I'm thrilled and honored to be a part of a community that is committed and um, excited and passionate about many dimensions to how we um, our leaders and can impact the world. So without further ado, I want to pass this on to a group of leaders, and I'm going to have them set more context to what this is all about. Um, but just to leave you with the name of this, this is this Facebook group now is called A Powerful Pause and Cause for Peace. And as you can all imagine, with all that's going on, and there's many dimensions to what's going on personally, professionally, economically, globally, with the war, we all know what's happening. We wanted to co-create an experience where we could just slow it down a little bit, remember who we are in the matter, and wake us up to what might we do with all that's going on. So with that said, I'm going to pass it on to uh, the next group of leaders and um, welcome them into this space of the powerful pause and cause for peace Facebook Live show, if you will. Yeah. Hello, Thank Christine. you, Rick. Thank you for the introduction. And I'd like to start by taking a moment to arrive here, to transition to this community, to be in this community together and to really be with this pause. I invite you to close your eyes. Begin to relax and notice your breath. Notice the sensations throughout your body. No need to control or change anything. Just be here. Feel your feet on the floor. Take notice of each of your 10 toes. Gently press individually each toe against the floor. Feel the weight of your legs making contact with your chair. Feel your spine strong and tall, supporting you and holding you up. Imagine there's a string pulling the crown of your head up towards the sky. With your next inhale, bring your shoulders up towards your ears. And with your exhale, roll your shoulders down your back, away from your ears. Release some of the weight you're carrying. Imagine that weight dripping off your fingertips. 
Maybe you shake it off a little. Relax your jaw. Soften the space between your eyebrows. And give yourself full permission to let go of your to-do list. Be fully present for this next 90 minutes. Whatever it is that you're thinking or feeling in this moment is exactly perfect. It's exactly how you should be showing up. Hold these thoughts and emotions lightly. Hold them without judgment. Take notice of your natural breath for a couple cycles. Just naturally inhale and exhale. Feel the air enter your body, fill you up and exit. And when you're ready, gently open your eyes. And with gratitude, we welcome you. Wow, that was beautiful. Thank you, Christine. And welcome everybody. We are so honored to have you here with us today. And as we kick this off, and we kicked it off with such a beautiful, calming moment. I want to share a poem with you or a contemplation. And just take a moment being here, being present with us. And as I read these beautiful words to you that have been actually given to a, from a friend of mine to me, I don't have the name of the author, but I will um, find out for you and actually share it with you in the, in the chat. And here it goes. The name is If. If I were to really observe myself, I would become aware of my tensions and habits. If I were to become aware of my tensions and habits, I would let go and relax. If I were to let go and relax, I would become aware of sensations. If I were to become aware of sensations, I would receive impressions. If I were to receive impressions, I would awaken to the moment. If I were awaken to the moment, I would experience reality. If I were to experience reality, I would see that I am not my personality. If I were to see that I am not my personality, I would remember myself. If I were to remember myself, I would let go of my fear and attachments. If I were to let go of my fear and attachments, I would be touched by love. If I were touched by love, I would seek union with love. If I were to seek union with love, I would will what love wills. If I were to will what love wills, I would be transformed. If I were transformed, then the world would be transformed. And if the world were transformed, all would return to love. Let's take a moment right here. And I would love to now invite my colleagues to join Sharon, Jeff, and Lori. And I would love to now invite my colleagues to join Sharon, Jeff, and Lori. I'd love to know my colleagues. Hi, Lori and Jeff. Hello. Um, thank hey, you, Sharon. For, 
being in this conversation with me after that um, beautiful welcome. And as we've been exploring this, um, this topic, what, what some of us have noticed is that it takes more than an invitation to pause or our, even our own knowledge of what it takes to settle ourselves in times like this. Um, we sometimes need, need more in order to transform. I love that last part of the poem. If I were to will what love wills, I would be transformed. And if I were transformed, the world would be transformed. And when there's um, war and, and conflict and a lack of peace in the world, um, there's also a lack of peace with, within us. And so we're, we're here to talk about um, for us, what's real, what's here, um, normalize it, accept it, because it is, as Christine said, whatever is here now is, is exactly right. It's exactly how we're meant to show up because it's what's real for us. So I'm curious what, what's coming up for you? What are you aware of in terms of your um, impressions or sensations? What's, what's here and real for you right now? Let's give voice to that because other people are feeling that too. Yeah, I think it's wonderful that we're taking time to acknowledge all the feelings that we're having these days. Um, and being able to take that pause and just be in it and sit in it and notice it um, is an incredible investment in ourselves. And being able to take the time, even if it's just for a few minutes, to really be present, as Christine encouraged us to do, and then also with the Ellis poem, being able to just notice these feelings rather than getting too lost in those feelings. Um, I'm really grateful that we're taking the opportunity to do that today. Yeah, thanks, Lori. Is there anything coming up for you in particular that wants to be named or accepted, mm. acknowledged? Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I think top of mind right now is what's happening in Ukraine. And, um, you know, I served in the military for 10 years. I'm definitely thinking about my brothers and sisters in arms, um, not just in the American military, but also obviously in the Ukrainian military and even the Russian military. Um, a lot of people who may or may not want to be there. Um, and so when I'm feeling these, um, you know, this anxiety about everything that's going on there, what I have to remember is that um, I'm feeling that connection because I'm a human being and I see other human beings in distress in another part of the world. But when I think about where I am right now today, I am, I'm in a home. I'm not under physical threat. I am not in that environment physically right now in the present. And so I'm, what's coming up for me is how can I be grateful for that, first of all, and then what can I do? What, how can I be when I'm thinking about the kind of energy I want to bring to the situation? Um, and that can be really challenging because I, you know, I want to do more. Um, and I think even just taking this time today is a way that we can acknowledge the anxiety and frustration and worry yeah. about things that are happening in another part of the world. Um, and try to start with ourselves and how we um, respond to a global crisis um, and how we want to move forward. What are the things that we want to do? What are, how do we want to be? So yeah, a lot of things coming up. It's, um, and I'm, I'm feeling this sort of sense of urgency of, you know, there's, the, there's gratitude and there's, you know, concern yeah. and there's um, love and there's sadness and there's, um, and there's a, a desire to really do something. And, Sometimes um, I notice anyway, for me and, and people I work with that we, we sort of jump to that and, and, mm -hmm. and kind of like push ourselves a little to yeah. get past it or, or get into action. And so this pause gives us a chance to really notice and savor what's actually here and then use that to inform what we're doing. And, um, you know, there's fear, there's, there's anger, there's all kinds of stuff in, in the world right now. And so I want to normalize that I've been through all of that this week too. And this, this joy and gratitude and aliveness around everything seems, colors seem brighter. Everything seems more um, important because it's precious, you know, like yeah. this puts stuff in perspective. And so but I, I don't want to force other people to feel that because we're all in a different place with this right now. So yeah. wherever, for anyone listening, wherever you are, um, 
yeah, feel what you're feeling. Let it be there for this time that we're together and trust it to start to shift because it does. It, it, it's meant emotions are emoting. They're meant to move. It's the Latin root of it means to move, I think, something like that. So, um, so yeah, I'm just, in, I, I'm, I'm kind of cherishing this, this time we get to spend together to be with, with what's real for us and not yeah. let it, like you said, Lori, not let it, um, not get lost in it or let it take us over because our emotions aren't our personality either. I love mm -hmm. that part of the quote that, um, and they don't determine how we, how we behave, but they, but, but they deserve to be honored and, and heard. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jeff, what's, what's coming up for you? I know how much you, um, you know, you bring love into your work and care and caregiving and caring for the caregivers. And so, um, I'd love to hear, you know, what's here for you that's real that others may be feeling out there too right now. Well, I just want to first say that I'm grateful for being here and to be part of this rich conversation. The one thing I've learned um, lately is, is to slow down, slow down my thinking, slow down um my uh just slow just slow down the processing because the more i'm at peace the more the more the world is at peace yeah and i think that's one of my gifts is i i exude a, a confidence a calming peaceful presence and I'm a, I'm a caregiver and there's so much, um, I think there's a lesson in that for the world, uh, especially the, you know, t during this time of war with the, uh, you know, with the, between Ukraine and Russia is, um, is peace. Like I have found inner peace in caregiving and that is, I think that's rare because, you know, you have uncertainty, uh, turmoil, the, all the things that we have during this, this time in the world. And it's just so precious to have, to be peaceful in times of turmoil. Yeah. And the peace I, within us. I love that, Jeff. And then you mentioned uncertainty. And I, I know that for many people, this lack of ability to predict or control where this is headed um, can be really hard to be with and agitating and yeah. slowing down can feel like, uh, you know, I, I want to get into action. Like Lori, you were pointing to that too. And, mm -hmm. and so what's your advice for people who, because I'm sure Jeff, at some point, you know, you're, you're dealing with hard things, you know, yeah. um, severe, serious illness and, you know, caregiving, is facing things you can't control and being with things that are very difficult. And so what's your advice about how people can access that part of them that allows them to slow down? And, and what's the gift in that when you do? Well, I think the first step is to, well, first of all, we have to accept, um, you know, the things we can't control and but on the other hand, we can be create, we can explore our creativity and um, come up with action steps, such as, um, you know, help out charities or open up our homes or, you know, make a donation. It's, it's, it's actually, a rich time for everyone and it's a time where we all i think the collective energy that we all have is is slowing the more we i slow down the more this the events in the world slow down but yeah. we can still take action we can still I love take this. it's pointing to something um that i I say a lot and it's, it's about marinating as a strategy. So yeah. savoring, soaking in what's real and what's here and 
allowing the richness of that to inform what we do next. It doesn't mean we don't take action. It doesn't mean we don't respond quickly when something really needs to be done, but we're really pretty good at that as humans. And so this idea of being in, being with is such a gift that, that I love you point to creativity in order to access creativity. The, the more we use this, you know, the emotional richness and the aliveness and the connection and the, the, the depth, the sweetness, all of that, um, and the anger, everything that's here, the more we can truly be, be our, our fully creative selves. That's right. And our number one resource is creativity. Mm. We have, yes. And it's the source of our security. We're yeah. also scared, but, um, Rick loves to say this, that creativity is, is really the source of our security. Yes, yeah. it is. So, and we're all we creative. We, yes, we are. We yeah. are. No. Yeah. Yes, we definitely are. And I, I love that the rest of the program today is, is going to be um, helping us access so much more of that and moving us into, into that place where we can naturally activate versus forcing and dominating ourselves because there's enough domination in the world right now. We don't need to be doing that to ourselves. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing and being here. And um, I'm so grateful to be here with you both. You're amazing leaders and uh, I really appreciate you. Thank you. you too, Sharon. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to Lisa Dare and company and they're gonna take it from uh, here. I really appreciate you. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks. Okay. So All right, well, thank you, um, Sharon and Jeff and Lori um, for um, really starting that conversation and highlighting a couple of really important things, which is what is it that each of us as individuals can do? Um, and you know, where's where's the state of the world right now? And so that's that's really what we're going to explore. And I love that segue from creativity because it happens to be one of my favorite topics. We, I talk a lot about it, um, but we're going to kick things off actually with um, a member of our our collective in this particular segment, uh, Dr. Vicki Jo, um, we call her Dr. VJ, uh, very fondly. So um, we're gonna start off with a, a video um, recording from her. She's just having some challenges. Um, she's living um, She's living the, the real life of what's happening right now in Europe, which is that she's got issues with her internet um, because she's traveling in Europe. And so she's actually gonna share a recording uh, with us. So Rick, I think you're going to cue that up for us. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, everybody do your uh, your magic technology wisdom <laughs> juices so it all works perfectly. Um, Vicki Joe did a beautiful job of creating a video really quickly, and uh, she has some beautiful things to say. So here we go. Let me share screen. Thank you all for watching, for hanging with this technology transition moment. Here we go. And um, if you're if you're watching this and all of a sudden it's not working or something, please in the chat tell me, not working, it's choppy, can't hear it. And we'll go to plan B, okay? Or we'll try again. Here we go. I'm assuming you all can see that. Do you see a blank screen? Great, thank you everybody for nodding your heads. Turn up your volume, everybody at home. If you're watching, here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world and what time you're tuning into this broadcast. Currently, I'm on uh, in France uh, on a very rainy day. I know I'm silhouetted by this image, which you're not supposed to do, but I love it so much that I couldn't resist. Um, the church tower in the background and the Pyrenees in the distance. This is not my home. I'm taking care of it for someone else for the six weeks that I'm here. Now, the reason that I'm taping this instead of doing it live is because Robin and I have been on our computers all week and have suffered a lot of outages and stutters and, and getting booted off and various problems due to the massive cyber attacks that are going on all over Europe right now around the Ukraine-Russia war. I think about uh, Winston Churchill's beautiful speech where he said, we will fight them on the land, we will fight them on the sea, we will fight them in the air. But he certainly never said, 
we will fight them on the internet. So rather than risk an internet outage and having you suffer through that, I decided to record it to try to get around that. And even so, this is my third attempt to record this because I'm having various internet issues that we don't normally experience. Now, I want to share my PowerPoint real quickly here. Let's see if I can get this up. Oh, yes. So this event is titled A Pause and Cause for Peace, Be the Change You Want to See. I was delighted to be invited to participate because this really hits me in the heart of who I am and the work that I do in the world. Now, when I was in grad school, the individual I studied the most was Carl Jung. You may know his name. And I'd like to share a meaningful quote from Dr. Jung. He said, the world hangs by a thin thread. That thread is the psyche of man. Nowadays, we are not threatened by elemental catastrophes. And by that, he meant, you know, uh, tornadoes and earthquakes and hurricanes, which, of course, with climate change, we are experiencing, but perhaps not to the degree that they were in the back in the you know, stone ages. But what he says is that we, meaning human beings, are the great danger. The psyche is the great danger. He says, what if something goes wrong with the psyche? And so it is demonstrated in our day what the power of the psyche is, how important it is to know something about it. But we know nothing. Now, Jung was one of the founding fathers of psychology, and I think in the century since his time, we've come a long way, partly due to his influence, of beginning to understand the psyche. And my sense is that everybody involved with this broadcast, the coaches and the leaders, have some sense of getting in touch with psyche and having a relationship with it. And that brings us to the idea of the pause. I think when we pause, it's an opportunity to come into relationship with our inner self, with psyche, and to recognize the images, the voices, the ideas that are going on in there. And, uh, and then I want to speak to everybody and say, this is what we do. All of the leaders and coaches in this space have their own techniques and tricks and tactics for having people come into relationship with psyche to take that pause, to find that wisdom. So I'm going to share my screen once more very quickly, if I can, if it lets me. There it is. Okay. So that was a pause. You got to see us actually embodying a pause. So uh, I'm doing an event at the end of the month for the Association of Psychological Types International. That's one of the ways that I connect with Psyche. My website is drvickyjoe.com, and I have a QR code here. If you point your cell phone at that QR code and uh, and take a picture of it, it will take you to my website. You can sign up for my newsletter, and I will be notifying people of this free event I'll be doing for the Association of Psychological Type later in March. And you can also keep up with my crazy travels all over the world in my newsletter that comes out once a week. So thank you so much for participating in this pause with Robin and I today. I hope you've got something valuable for yourself, feel free to try this on your own. It's better when you have someone facilitate you, which is why you know coaches are so invaluable. But certainly try it out and then draw your own picture and see what Psyche has to say to you. So I'll leave it there for now. Thanks so much for listening and I'll see you around. Goodbye. She's so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Vicki Joe. It's like she was right here in the room with us, right? <laughs> right. Um, so where I wanted to take it is I think that from just our, our the previous discussion, there was a lot around 
um, getting in touch with um, our inner selves. Um, certainly Vicki Joe talked about that. I think that metaphor of hanging by a thread, I think a lot of us are feeling that way, right? And a lot of people are looking for what's needed. What do I need to do with this? Now that I'm aware of it, what do I do with it? And we hear that, you know, part of this answer is creativity. So I want to put it out to you guys because I know from some of the reading that I've done, creativity is very much a whole brain um, activity, but it also involves a lot of different parts. So um, just want to hear from you guys, thoughts around creativity. How can we access creativity? How do we use it in the, in the times that we're going through right now? I can start with that. Um, my name is Allison Scott. I'm a health and wellness coach. And um, one of the things I think that really activates the brain in terms of self-care, because I'm all about self-care, is, is doing something creative and doing something for yourself. And a lot of times we don't make time to do things that are creative. Um, we saw in the pandemic how people, you know, took up all these um, activities of watercolor and painting and whatnot um, because it was a time of stress and fear. And I think we're feeling continuing to feel that. And so I think doing something for your brain, it's not only um, activating the part of your brain that can help overcome fear, it's doing something for yourself. It's, it's a part of self-care. So. And also, too, I think when you talk about that, Allison, that there's a very strong mind-body connection, right? There's, Definitely. Um, Definitely. There's also a lot of research that shows that many of us also feel through many of our organs, right? And being mindful um, of that as well. But we can only do that if we're at our best, right? And Definitely. attending to ourselves. So, um, Iris, what about for you? Yeah, and I mean, Lisa, great that you mentioned other organs, right? Because the organ that comes to my mind that is really most important is connecting with our heart, right? Because right now what we are feeling is um, anger, worry, concern, all of these not useful emotions that really diminish our creativity, that diminish our thinking, that di diminishes our performance at work as well as in life. And so what we really, what we really want to connect with is with the love and with our heart. Because in the end, and I love that, um, um, you know, what Jimi Hendrix said many, many years ago, when the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world with no peace, right? And what we are seeing in Europe right now is, is, the, is the love for power. It is the love of suppression, right? And when I talk about love, it's not the emotion, right? The emotion that I feel for a specific person. Of, I love you, but it, love is really a state of consciousness that we are bringing to ourselves as well as we are bringing to other people. Because that is really the only place where we can start is with ourselves, getting in touch with our emotions and consciously choose and be aware of the emotions that we are expressing to the world. And it, and it sounds like as you talk about that, Iris, it's, it goes back to what Vicki Jo was saying about our psyche, right? And how it's the relationship that we have with ourselves before that relationship goes out in the world. Right. Um, well, right. right? So, and yes. And that threat, right, is the anger, the fear, and all of that that puts our psyche in danger. Mm -hmm. And that is where we have to make that conscious choice and shift. And we can't allow the environment around us to influence and manipulate into a place where it becomes unhealthy, right? And that is, again, then where the self-care comes in that Alison talks about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a huge theme in what we're talking about, which is, everything starts with ourselves. Mm. And once we initiate that, that's where change really happens and transformation happens. Right? So, yes. Um, yeah, so David, I, I wanna hear from, um, would love to hear from you. Yeah, thanks so much, Lisa. Um, uh, Iris uh, hit it right on uh, the, the nail, right on the head. When talking about emotions, uh, you know, we're, we we need to be aware of our emotions. We need to feel our emotions. And and I think sometimes we think creativity is just about like painting or or music or or or, or art. And of course it is. But but when we think about, what, I think people say, well, I'm not very creative. Well, um, uh, actually, you are because you create your day every day. 
day. <laughs> you, you create the, your morning, you create your journey to work, whether that's down the stairs or, you know, uh, commuting to an office building. And so, so how do you, how can we create more of a, uh, of a world for ourselves that we want? And just imagine if every single person on the planet created a, 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 a world of peace and love for themselves, what that would do for the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that, you know, it's part of what we're talking about is this powerful pause, like just stop. Let's just all stop for a moment uh, and, and think, you know, what can we do to create peace? first of all, in our lives. Uh, and then that's just gonna, and then we'll tell two friends and they'll tell two friends <laughs> and on and on it goes. Uh, and, and so, uh, but it, it starts with getting in touch with ourselves and understanding our own emotions. And the reality too, is that we can't really access the creativity, however it shows up for us without actually giving ourselves that space to do it, right? It's we are inundated with so much data on a regular basis that our brains are just overwhelmed and we just need to actually if, whether it's a micro break or it's a longer break to have that space to create to allow for creativity and creation right however it shows up and as you said i love david that you're stressing that creativity doesn't mean that you're an artist um it can show up in a lot of different ways you're a good problem solver um you know maybe you come up with like the doctor and uh, where I live that came up with a portable uh, ventilator, right? He, right? he repurposed ventilators during COVID, right? Lots of different ways it can show up. Um, but I think we've got, um, Grace, I think you're, you're a great one to sort of um, chime in with this one because you do have that. I think you've got some really great um, ways in which you can talk about creativity. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm just noticing a, a ch uh, one of the notes in the chat. When we share and embrace our heart, we are more compassionate and, empath and empathic, the seeds of understanding in order to accept and align. Mm -hmm. And that what, uh, what speaks to me about that is that being in touch with our heart, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's like it's the mind body spirit connection, mm -hmm. right? We've got our psyche, that's the thin thread. Um, but then we also have this body that we that we are living in. And then we're, we're, uh, we have our heart and our spirit. So mm -hmm. how do we connect all of those? Um, how, how do we see the connections between all of those in order to create that? Uh, or, or to be in that creativity? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that that is a great point um, that you've just made, Grace, is that, you know, we can talk about all these things on an intellectual level, um, right. but how do we actually make it real, right? How do we actually embody that? And I think that that's the next piece that we're going to go to because you are going to lead us in an exercise um, that's going to help everyone to do that. I am. So uh, I'm a, a professional cuddler. I know that's a thing. Uh, so I am a professional. And it's legitimate. And, right? It's not that kind. Um, but uh, I, uh, in being, pre as you can imagine, the past two years has been challenging to do my work when you have to stay six feet away from people Isolating. and be indoors and all the things. Um, but I've been exploring then how do we soothe ourselves? What is a self-soothing uh, because if I, if I'm living alone and I have no one to hold, how can I hold myself? How can I be present with myself? So um, what I'd love to invite us all to do is to simply begin by leaning back in your chair and being comfortable. Um, and those of us who are watching on Facebook, please join in uh, if it's safe to do so. And I'm going to invite you just to have your hands in your lap. I'm going to hold mine up here so that you can see them. But um, go ahead and simply begin to rub your hands together. And see how that, just pay attention to how that feels. Our hands do so much for us. If we can just be in touch with the, the presence of our hands, the being of our hands, instead of the doing of them, 
and just explore what does it feel like? What does it feel? And perhaps then you explore the back of your hands. Just be present with your hands and enjoy the pleasure that you can enjoy from feeling your hands, from being with your hands. And perhaps you notice that there's an arm attached to that hand, and so you explore the arm. And perhaps you begin noticing an emotion that comes up. Simply be present with what is. And I'll invite you to take your right hand and bring it up to your left shoulder. And then take your left hand and bring it to your right shoulder. If it feels good, if it doesn't feel good, don't do it. And simply begin caressing your arms from the top to the bottom. Provide that space for yourself as if you're giving yourself a hug. And perhaps end with a squeeze. And you know, when we think, when we hug people, we always think good thoughts about them, or usually we're thinking good <laughs> thoughts about the people that we hug, right? <laughs> and so as you're hugging yourself, remember to think good thoughts about the person you're hugging. Well, thank you, Grace, because I'm thinking lots of good thoughts, not only for the people that are in the circle right now with me, but everyone on this call, um, everyone around the world, others that will be watching this later. Um, that was just absolutely beautiful. Um, and I think that we have an absolutely uh, beautiful close to to this part of our um, to this part of our presentation, which is from the uh, amazing and very talented. David Corey, because um, we talked about how we as a collective in this group uh, are, are a, a circle of love. And, and that's actually what David is going to share with us. Thank you so much, Lisa. Oops. Thank you so much, Lisa. Uh, I wrote this song for my kids when they were little. Uh, and it's about the kind of world that I wanted them to grow up in. Uh, and um, uh, if you like the song and you want to, you know, play it for your own kids, uh, you can find me on Bandcamp. Just type in David Corey into Bandcamp and you'll find a whole bunch of songs uh, about emotions and emotional intelligence there. Here we go. Oops, there we go. <laughs> Everyone took a hand Everyone in every land If everyone took a hand Everyone in every land We'd make a circle We'd make a circle We'd make a circle, a circle of love. We'd make a circle, we'd make a circle, we'd make a circle, a circle of love. If everyone put down their gun, everyone under the sun, if everyone put down their gun Everyone under the sun We'd make a circle We'd make a circle We'd make a circle A circle of love We'd make a circle We'd make a circle We'd make a circle a circle of love. 
If everyone said no more war Everyone on every shore If everyone said no more war Everyone on every shore We'd make a circle We'd make a circle We'd make a circle, a circle of love. We'd make a circle. We'd make a circle. We'd make a circle, a circle of love. If everyone took a hand, everyone in every land, if everyone took a hand, everyone in every land, we'd make a circle, we'd make a circle, we'd make a circle, a circle of love. We'd make a circle, we'd make a circle, we'd make a circle, a circle of love. We'd make a circle, a circle of love. We'd make a circle, a circle of love. Beautiful. 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 Absolutely. Thank you so much, David. Oh. And I feel like we have um, created a circle, not here, but around the world. Um, and so I know that there's a lot of emotion coming through the, the comments. Here. So thank you so much, um, my amazing colleagues and the ones that are, are on the call with us today. Um, I am uh, going to be passing it over and on deck, uh, we've got Melanie, Melissa, Taryn, Heidi, um, who are gonna be coming up next. And so thank you so much. Stay tuned, more amazing things to come. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh, and while we're transitioning from the circle of love, we want to welcome all of you to this part. And you're gifting us with time. And the time that you're bringing in would also be a call to look for a pen and look for a piece of paper. So while we're getting into the space from the circle of love, there are emotions ebbing and flowing. And this is an invitation to open up your minds, open up your hearts, open up your will to let go and let come. And um, I, I love to be in that space that was created. It's a beautiful space that was created by our colleagues before us. And David, that's a, an incredible song. Uh, and I can see why you would want that for your children. And, 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 and so the vision of what's possible in our world um, is so juxtaposed to the world as it is. And as hard as it may seem, I'm going to bring us back to the world as it is right now. Um, because the world as it is has people dying in the streets, um, residential buildings being bombed, um, the world as it is has a nuclear plant being taken over by a hostile um, force. The world as it is, is experiencing climate change at a rate that we've never, ever seen it before. Just um, documented in the very most latest within the last week, IPCC report. So um, there is such a temptation, right, to uh, sweep this under the rug. And I'm asking us to do something different. I'm asking us all to think of what we're actually carrying as parents, grandparents. I'm a new grandmother. I have a granddaughter born just a few weeks ago and she's coming into this world of uncertainty and volatility. And I'm afraid, you know, I, I, I wanna be in that future world, right? And we have a path to walk to get to peace that is challenging. And there are things that we stand for and want to fight for. And I, I want to honor that as well. And so 
I'm going to ask you to actually go into the places where you feel fear, where you feel uncertainty, where maybe you're angry as hell. And maybe you are wishing that our country would do more or your country would do more. You're, you're thinking things that you wish that you didn't have to think. And I notice in my own body as I bring myself there, my sister clenched and um, my voice is changing and my stomach has a pit. And I want you to just feel free where you are. We're going to release this, but first we need to feel it and not deny it because from this place of no, not that we gather power, a different kind of power to make change happen. So I'm asking you to notice it in your body and even maybe even let your body move into that stance of whatever it is that you need it to be right now, because you're holding a lot. You're holding your family in your arms and in your heart. You're holding the people of Ukraine. You're holding the climate, whatever it is that you care most about that's at risk right now. And I'm going to pass it to Heidi. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Melissa. And as you did so beautifully, there just are so, there's so much range of emotion, right? Even in the last few minutes to shift, I can feel myself carrying and holding and my chest is tight. And so what I want to invite you all to do is if you're comfortable is to actually close your eyes. And if you're not comfortable with that, just a soft, downward gaze, but it's really about going internal in your experience. And I would love to take a really deep breath and ground. I know we started with some grounding at the beginning. Just imagine there's a grounding cord going down the middle of your spine, all the way through your legs. If you're standing or sitting, doesn't matter, but through your feet and just connecting deeply to earth, to mother earth, to the space, below us that holds us. When we lose our strength, when we're knocked off our kilter. And imagine there's a grounding cord or it could be a rope or a branch or anything that's going all the way through your body, through your legs, deep, deep, deep into the earth. And when you get that to a place that naturally lands, I want you to anchor it. Maybe there's a tree or some sort of anchor. This is all in your mind's eye, but a way that you can really ground yourself into this experience here and now. And now here, just notice what true feeling you have, what thought you have, what belief you have. And I'm going to ask you to do it in a way that is something that you would actually like to shift in this moment, right? It may not be forever, but something that you'd rather not be with. You want to work through. So about 15 feet in front of you or five meters for those in other places outside the US, imagine that there is a huge container, a vessel, some big shape. You can make it a trash can or a wheelbarrow, whatever you it is, some container. Because as, as Melissa mentioned, we are, we're holding so much. And so it's about how can you release this? So on the front of that container, I want you to write whatever word comes to mind. A feeling, a belief, could it be about yourself, the world? So for me, it's anxiety. It's writing anxiety on the front of that container. Could be a belief, I'm not doing enough. I'm good at that one too. Just write something across the front of that container. And as you do so, I want you to imagine that vessel container is like a magnet and it's drawing all of this energy, the anxiety, the judgment, whatever it is for you. And it is flow flowing into that container. And you can watch it fill up, fill up with all the things that you're wanting to release from your own body, your physical, your heart, your head, all parts of you. 
I'm going to let Taryn take it from here. And imagine this container. Embody it. Feel it. What does the weight feel like that's holding this energy and the thought and the words? One word, many words that is in there. For me, it's intolerance. That's what's sitting in this container in front of me. And now picture this container being released, however you want to release it. Do you want to dump it? Do you want to throw it? Energetically push it away from you and pour it into Mother Earth. Mother Earth is able to absorb this. She can take this energy and filter it through so that you can receive an opening for more capacity. So just imagine releasing that, whether it's a pouring or a throwing, you know what you want to do with this. And so just take a minute to let that settle however it is, go away, move away, ground into the earth. And now I want you to imagine um, could be the sky, the universe, but a big space above you where there is some sort of light. And just imagine that this light is now filling all of your cells, all of your being with a whole new kind of energy. It's, it's replacing everything that you just let go of. So you can think of it as the opposite. So for me, I'm letting go of anxiety. I might be bringing calm, peace, and let that light just shower your whole being and receive that. Beautiful. So you can go ahead and open your eyes. And part of the reason we wanted to do this is just to show you how quickly you can transition from that state of yuck. We did this in a little lengthier um, experience, but you can do that in two, three minutes throughout your day to bring in that light. And Melanie, I'll turn it over to you from here. And mm. opening my eyes, I feel like there's a circle of love. There's a way to connect to others. The sound is moving over from the previous group of how do we connect and creativity of connecting to something. So whatever it was, that resource in order to create that highway, that neurological pathway, I invite you to take your pen. Take your pen into your non-dominant hand. Play with it. Breathe magic into that pen. And then just put it on that piece of paper and just let your hand move across the paper. And it is the feeling that you're taking away. And whatever the feeling is, let yourself be guided across the paper. Believe in the wisdom of your hand and in your body transferring. And there might be a symbol showing up. There might be a word. There might be something you want to add to this. And so whatever comes and there's this mess and I'm seeing rocks piled on top of each other. Oh, and it is gorgeous to see a heart and the infinity loop. So whatever it is, it's your artifact. It is something, a visual reminder how you can get back into your body. And there's an opportunity as well to prolong this. If you are yearning for more of this, we have an invitation, Melissa. So we will be um, taking this um, approach, this pause for peace and creating a practice for the next four Fridays. Um, you'll see a link in the chat and um, it won't be all of this embodiment all the time. In Zoom, we'll use Zoom. We have an opportunity to actually let people connect with each other and have your own process and your own thoughts and really work through this um, making sense of what's happening in our world and moving from maybe whatever you're feeling, uh, we all feel something different, to hopefully a more powerful, proactive place 
where we can make the difference that's ours to make. And in, and in fact, um, I think that transitions us into the very next ses- section of this program, because we don't want to just to leave you with happy hearts and a, and a circle of peace, but actually into um, possibility and action and responsibility. So thank you. And so we're welcoming into that space to lead us through the next session. It's going to be Karen, Mike, Lynn, and Joanne handing it over. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank wow. You. Here we are. Here we are. It's great to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful pause. With all the people that we can't see, but who we can feel out there. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I just want to take a moment to appreciate everybody who's brought us to this point in the program. Yeah. Yeah. When we were, when we were convening early on, we had this, we are hearing out there people feeling powerless or helpless. And we were really, really interested in tapping into each of us and our powerfulness, our empowerment. And that was a, a bit of a through line from the time that you joined today. But we want to kind of dig into that a little bit more now. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we all deal with things differently. And when we each bring our different ways together, we're so much more powerful. Yeah, and we want to invite everybody who's out there watching us. It's not just the 24 of us, but it's all of us. Because here's the thing. Every single one of us has the power within us to make the world a better place. And it's yours to take, yours to choose. And we're going into now, like now into this, like responsible and action. We want to get into this action space now. Um, And what's that responsibility and action that we want to take with all these amazing possibilities that came across the screens and even within the chat that we have. So what is it that, I mean, I, I know I was listening to quite a few of the things which were coming up and I was just wondering like what were some of the things that you you guys heard? Like what what did you what did you get a sense for um, in the in in the earlier on sessions? The big one I heard as a common thread through all of it is our creativity, and it's our creativity that helps us confront the fears, right? To take responsibility for making a difference in the world. Yeah, and even for people who say I'm not creative, we are all that that sense of we are all creative. And I I would build on that, Mike, say and end the circle of love and lacing it with love and and really harnessing the power of love. I'm the founder of Badass Sagers, and one of the things that we do is elevate this idea of love what you love, like let that be out in the world, let that flow in the world, um, in the land of there are no rules. Yes. And so as we um, as we embrace this time in the world, this isn't so much what I heard before, but I just want to build on that. It's like, I've heard people say, oh, you know, it feels even kind of awkward or I maybe shouldn't feel joy because people are dying in the Ukraine. And I want to offer an entirely different perspective, which is the world needs our joy and our joy is our fuel and our love is the fuel. And um, a quote came in yesterday from Brother David Stendhal Ross that joy is the happiness that doesn't depend on what happens. So it's like if we start with joy and we we lace that with our love, then that's powerful. And then what we do whatever our own gifts are, whatever's easy for us, whatever's joyous for us, so that's going to look as different as every human on the planet. I love what you're saying. Mike and Lynn, and I want to add to that creativity is that we need to bring curiosity, curiosity about our own inner world and mental state, emotional state, physical state, and how we can bring that forth to um, then have better interpersonal relationships and by extension, then better family, team, organizational, community, and finally, 
the world because when we look at what's going on both in our home country and the world, it's become a scary place. And when we look back at the end of our lives, we want to know that we did our best effort to make a difference and that we truly tried to be curious enough to align with everyone's different feelings and perspectives and alter that. Yeah, I love what you're saying, Karen, because a lot of the stuff that I also like to do is, is, is you know, the, um, bringing the connections and groups and teams to be able to be heard, right? And there's so much wisdom and, and power in that. Right. And even even us as a group, as we came together in such a brief time, right, we we came up with some really great ideas. And even what Melissa just said uh, just recently, where she's going to create a Zoom call where she'll be holding space and they'll be doing other activities where we can we can we can talk. Right. And we can share what's going on. We don't have to hold on to this ourselves. It does start within ourselves, but we, we can also become more powerful together and by sharing a lot of this information and be feeling like we're being heard, you know, uh, it just, to me, it, it just creates more of that connection and that richness. Um, and and it, it can help with that powerful piece. You're so right. And I'm thinking yeah. about, Oh, sorry, Karen, go ahead. Go, oh, go ahead. I'll yeah. come in later. I was thinking about like, like, like how we ground that in reality, like how we make that super, super practical so that we make it real. It's not just a good idea. We're just not imagining it. Ooh, I almost used a word. Stuff is happening, you know, like, and we're part of the making stuff happen. So I'm curious about for us, the things that we're hearing that are inspiring us out there in the world, things that people are doing, good, good kind of things that you want to pass along. Um, and, and I know we each have some to share, but I also want to invite everybody who's listening now or later to put in the chat the really most excellent things that are that they're they're discovering, the actions that they're taking. It's very very exciting creative time that's happening out there in the world right now. Probably one of the most creative things I've seen recently to get money to the people in the Ukraine is people are booking an Airbnb in the Ukraine as a means to get money to people there. They're not going, but they're booking an Airbnb in order to get money to them. Yeah, it's really, how can we purchase what's going on in the Ukraine and only purchase it digitally because they can't, they're, they're locked off. They can't send things out, but they need our support and they need us to buy their products, even if we're never going to use them, because that will help fund their efforts and show that we really care. It's not enough to just say we care. How are we individually and collectively going to act on it and show our compassion and our em empathic ability to have not only better communication and conversations, but act on it with courage. Yeah. And, yeah and I, sorry. Can I? Yeah. <laughs> because I know we love doing this. Like, I, sorry if we talk over each other. We're good though. We can figure it all out. <laughs> um, and that the one thing that uh, comes up for me is starting locally, right? Like, it's just it, it. Some of this can just start so easily. Like, it's like this is a big, very big problem. We know there's tons of factors. There's a lot of complexities here. It's a really gnarly big issue. And so how can we do it? We can chip away at chip away at it small. And so for me, it's like I can connect with others. I, I can talk to my uh, folks that uh, are, are close to me that are in the Ukraine or affected by people in Ukraine and hear them and talk to them. And my I, I even um, reaching out to the elderly, the, the ones that have ex experienced this in the past that, you know, can get triggered by this as well. Right. Like I, I love, I think, I don't know who said it was earlier on, but the peace starts with us. And if we're all at peace, the, the world can be at peace. And I think we can, we can do this one at a time, right? So reaching out and connecting to others is really super important. Yeah. yeah. And holding the hope and being the joy and being mm -hmm. love, like, like energetic. We're all like electricity, right? Like electricity yeah. and water, you know, it's sort of that. but whatever each of us, as a human being, this little, this collection of me and you and everyone, we are energy. 
And our energy that we put out into the world matters in ways that we don't even know. Um, so building on what you were saying, Joanne, about starting within, like being that, that energetic force for good. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, because we all complain about a toxic environment around us, whether it's at home or what we see in the media abroad. And the reality is that we have to do our own specific steps to create a better world and shift that culture and make it something that's more meaningful and more peaceful for all of us, starting with ourselves and everybody we reach out to. And I invite all of us to figure out what little steps we can do, because if everyone in the world did it, like when David was singing the song, the world would be a better place. We'd all be a big circle of love and caring. And, you know, I want to be a shout out for the collective, the sharing inside of the caring, the connection. Um, you know, the Internet's been so amazing that way, right? Like, like in an instant, we all globally can know a thing, right? So as we harness that for good, as we share what it is that's inspiring us. Or for instance, y'all, um, you know, on the Saturday Night Live cold open where it was oh, the yeah. Ukraine choir. They took, you know, it was so moving. Um, and then that got shared broadly or the, the woman with the soldier and the sunflower, the Ukrainian woman with the sunflower seeds in her pocket going up to the Roman soldier and offering him the sunflower seeds and that, you know, that had one meaning in the moment or one interpretation and, and I interpret it another way, but any way you look at it, it's really inspiring. So we have, we all have that ability to instantaneously, you know, create, link, share, connect, just do our, our whatever the next intuitive thing for us. Yeah. And there, there's something here though, it, that, I know Ukraine is this really large thing that's out there in our face right now. And 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 yet I want to honor there's a lot of other things which are out there in, in, in our face right now. And so everything that, you know, all of our colleagues have done beforehand and even what we're talking about now can be utilized for all these issues or challenges that we're facing. Yeah. That's what's coming up for me. Yeah. Um, and it will help with the burnout and the overwhelm and the anxiety that we're all feeling because, you know, maybe the pandemic helped get us ready for the Ukrainian situation. Mm -hmm. But the little things that we're dealing with in our personal lives and our work also get us prepared because we're all individually unique individuals that just are wanting to know we matter and that we're respected and treated with dignity. I have a quote I'd like to share, and it's from Viktor Frankl, and it says, between stimulus and response, there is a space, and in that space is our power to choose our response, <clears throat> and in our response lies our growth and our freedom. And so when I think about everything that's been happening through this whole, <coughs> pardon me, program, and what we're talking about here, it's just that pause in that space. Be mindful and, be, and, and choose how you're going to respond to what's going on. There's so much freedom in there, Mike. Right. When you can choose, you can choose where you want to go next. And there's so much freedom and within freedom, there's so much creativity. It's, it is. It's so pause is so powerful. It is so, so powerful. And that pause helped us to unify our differences and build on them rather than not accept mm -hmm. them and close doors. Mm -hmm. And Karen, and like you said, and joy and too, to get curious, mm -hmm. you know, if we're not pausing, there's just no room or space to, to get curious and really see from infinite perspectives. Um, I have a quote on my desk too that I actually happened to go out in my newsletter this week. It's kind of beautiful, but it's by Vivian Green. And it's, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. 
It's about learning how to dance in the rain. And to be response-able, Mike, as you said to us earlier, that reminder that we are response-able. Yeah, because otherwise we're all disabled rather than differently abled. And so from the responsible thing, like the, I would love it. I, mean, I can't see all the comments in Facebook and stuff like that. But I would so love for anyone who's here right now to actually put into the space, you know, what action can we start to, I mean, if it's like for donating to Ukraine or wherever else you think we need to do, what kind of action, if you were to pause right now, what kind of action, you know, would you recommend to do? And that would be great to kind of have in there. We can keep adding to it afterwards, but I would just love to hear uh, from you guys as well. And I want to... A couple of days ago, I um, was, you know, feeling that same urge, like, what can I do? Basically, I, I Googled the question, you know, like, what can I do? And the Global Citizen link popped up. It was very, very good. It was very well done. And it was like 20 things you can do. It was thoughtfully curated, um, different categories, excellent organizations to donate to. But that was just a piece of it. So I just wanted to do a little shout out for that. Yeah, really, it comes down to you don't have to make this up. If you're stuck, if you don't know what to do, look around, search. There's lots and of really inspiring ideas and people who are making a difference, whether we're talking about Ukraine or climate change or whatever it may be. Yeah, because just the people that around you in your family, in your friendship circle at work, they need you too. They need your support. They're yeah. feeling the same uncertainty you are. And when we all join together, we're so much better off. And that's that's what we've been doing, right? All yes. of us together, Absolutely. all 23 leaders are here to do exactly what that is, right? Yeah. A powerful pause and cause for peace. For peace. Because, because you matter. We each matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. And when we, we help others, we feel the gift and coming back in spades. <laughs> yeah, that's that infinite energy loop right there. Like, I think I sometimes hear people saying, oh, yeah, but I'm just me or, you know, I'm not that person with that great gift. Psh, you know, it's like when we open our eyes, when we get curious, when we give, then we are the great recipients for sure. Yeah, we're all gifted. So on that note, mm -hmm. uh, I just want to express gratitude to be here, not just with the three of you, but all 23 of us. So for those who have been watching us, thank you for that. Um, what you didn't know is we're sitting here watching each other and we're participating as much as we're being a part of this too. And Mike, just for everybody out there, this is not quite done, so stay tuned. Okay, continue. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So just hold on a little bit more, Mike. We are yeah, no, that's a good point. We have we have this whole spectacular ending coming. So yes, please stand by. Um, I also want to express gratitude. Oh, hey, me? Rick, welcome. Um, I when I heard the ending, to... I thought, oh, it's me. <laughs> Click on the video. I also want to express gratitude to every single person who has been watching this or will be watching us. Yeah. You can make a difference in the world. Look for that space that's between the stimulus and how you're gonna respond, pause and find how you can make a difference in our world. So with that, we wanna leave you with the video. And at the end of the video, we'll have a couple closing words. And as we go into the video, I would offer you two questions to hold, to hold in your heart and to look for what's your answer. And those questions are, what's yours to do? And what's yours to be? Rick? Yeah, I want to do an, uh, a fully um, outward redesign. I want the video to end it. It'll be just fine. Okay. Thank you. It doesn't need, it doesn't need words. Um, I'll just do uh, three words, three things that came to mind when listening to all of you. 
but came to me at the end and I just want to offer to all of us. Um, have to, want to, or get to. We don't have to do anything, but I know most people want to do something. And the beautiful thing is because we are creative souls, which you have all underlined beautifully today, is we get to. We get to. We get to have an impact on this amazing thing called the earth, each other as humans. And um, I'm always sad that it takes a crisis to wake that up, but that's where we are. So we are remarkable human beings and we will figure this out. Um, and I hold, of course, with harm to none. That's the hardest part to be with is there is harm happening in the midst of all this. So thank you for all of you who have co-created this. I want to be really transparent. Um, uh, almost 30 amazing souls who we work together in a, in a year long container. And um, the, the quote unquote homework assignment was we're going to put on an event tomorrow, which you're all watching right now. And um, a lot of chaos. I want to underline the power of chaos, confusion, confrontation, <laughs> every word you can imagine, every emotion was in the space. And what I'm blown away by is through all that chaos was an incredibly beautiful holding of a container of, you know, I can barely find words. You, you know, it, it's, and, and so I, I offer all of us who are watching, remember that chaos is a part of the creativity process. Try not to control it too much. So thank you all for being a part of this. For those that have been watching or you're watching today live, thank you for hanging with us. And, um, and you know, what is yours to do is the question on the table. And if you're watching later, join this group because I'm going to also put in this uh, in, in the space. Let's have this new group be alive and well and put creative ideas into it and reach out and call each other and let's have it be a community um, based on this beautiful language of a, uh, of a powerful pause and cause. So, okay, there you go. Going to roll the videotape. We'll let the videotape, videotape take us out. Everybody turn up your volume and let this wash over you and send some energy to the tech gods. <laughs> <laughs>